Hey y'all, welcome back to the garage. Today, we're back on monkey business. I know it's been a while, but, uh, you know, other things have come up. We had to get them done, had to work on plan B, had to work on plum crazy, uh, just some side work that I needed to get done. But today, we are getting back on monkey business. So, uh, we're gonna start out with the steering, try to get that buttoned up, that should be fairly easy. Uh, then we're gonna try to get the uh, clutch and stuff, uh, drive line final, finalized and uh, hopefully done. And then uh, we can move on to the brakes. Yeah, um, probably won't get to the brakes in this video, but uh, the steering and the drive line we should be able to get accomplished. So hang out and uh, we'll get the wrenching. get you all caught up on uh, where we're at um, we got the steering box moved uh, it's in place where it needs to be now we need to uh, I guess you call it the drag link um, get it uh, done uh, we were going to use time joints on both ends but I found this nice ball uh, ball and socket uh, end so I'm going to use it because it actually drops it down lower but we need to uh, you guys can see back here that's the bolt for the where the uh, uh, where the time joint's going to bolt on. Uh, we need to cut this, we're going to cut it up here, lengthen it, and then we're also going to put a bend in it to bend it up here so it clears this uh, clutch shaft and stuff. So uh, that's where we're at right now. Um, so let me uh grab a couple of tools and grab some get some stuff here and uh, we'll get to uh, get to put getting this thing put together all right y'all first things first we got to make a spacer um, this it was either three eighths or half inch um, I couldn't get any that was this is a 7 16 bolt so we're gonna have to Cut it, split it, and get it put over there. Um, I need three eighths of an inch uh, spacer to come off of this bracket here, so that the heim joint doesn't hit this little indentation over here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut off, and then uh, get it cut off, cleaned up. Uh, try to split it, and we'll uh, we'll. Uh, get it put on there and uh, see if we can you know figure out our angle that we need to bend this rod here at so all right hang on all right y'all I got the uh, spacers made uh, I made them a little thick I can't get my nut on the end of the bolt but that's no big deal for now but uh, now we just need to mark this where we need to bend it so we're going to bring it up uh, we're going to probably bend it right in that area right right there kind of lining it up horizontally so yeah that'll do right there and this ain't a precise science We don't want too steep of an angle because it'll want to bend. And if we go too steep, and it'll, it'll drop down. If it's too steep like this and comes across like a 90 degree, like right here, it'll it'll put a lot of stress on that joint for one. But when it this comes forward, it'll it'll it won't be right. So we're gonna bend it right in that area, right there, and. Uh, just try to get a, you know, not a real steep angle. What we'll probably do is uh, I'll get the oxyacetylene torch out. Um, 
put that piece in the vise, heat it up, bend it some, come over, fit it on the tractor, see how it looks, and uh, we'll go from there. Or maybe I'll just get a, grab a piece of cardboard and uh, just kind of draw a rough line of where I want it, and then uh, heat it up, bend it, and uh, see how close we are. So, all right, I'm going to do that off camera. Um, Y'all probably seen hundreds of people heat stuff up and bend it. Um, doesn't make real good video, so um, let me get that done, and then uh, we'll come back. All right, y'all. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck. My big oxyacetylene torches out of fuel. My little but my little um, map gas torch out of fuel. So I ended up using my little butane, which it's not a little one, but still um, wasn't ideal. I got it hot enough to bend it, but yeah, I think we uh, got a pretty decent angle there. So now I just need to uh, kind of hold it up there and find my tape measure. And knock stuff off and throw stuff around. Make it so you guys can't hear. But, uh, yeah, so now we just need to see how much of a gap we need to put in there. Yeah, about, uh, about two inches. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark this. I'm going to cut it back here about right there so we have plenty of room to weld and put our sleeve on. And, then, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that'll, I think that'll be plenty. Yeah, if not, we'll, we'll add more of a bend to it, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, cut in half, cleaned up, get me a spacer made, and uh, get it welded together, and get that done, um, we'll bring you back and show you all the results. <coughs> Alright y'all, I got my spacer all made there, um, I do have to lift up on it just a hair, uh, not a big deal. Um, I'll probably just put my uh, little jack thing under there and we're going to get the welder over here and get it uh, get it tacked together. We'll pull it off and then we'll uh, get it all welded all the way around. So yeah, uh, I think this is going to work out pretty good. So let me, uh, let me get the welder over here. We'll get that tacked up. And then uh, we'll finish weld it off. All right, y'all. Got it kind of braced up there. Yeah, it's kind of straight. But like I always say, good enough for who it's for. So, let's see if we can get this uh, tack welded in here. Looks like we got tacked good enough. I'll get that out of there. We'll get her over on the bench. I'll get her welded up and uh, maybe install it permanently. Well, we'll be able to install it permanently because I don't have a long enough bolt, but you know, we'll get closer. So, all right, give me a couple minutes and uh, we'll get this done. All right, y'all, we got that all in there. So, let's uh. I got the front end jacked up a little bit, just to get some of the weight off the front tire so it's a little easier to turn. But uh oh. Stuff over on the other tire was moving. So alright. Yeah, we got her uh she pretty well whooped. I think she'll do good. Alright. All right, we got that done. I just need to uh, tape my jam nuts up. And uh, I did get the bolt on there because I took one of the spacers I made, cut it down a little thinner, 
just to uh and uh, the bolt was long enough then so um yeah i think everything is adjusted well so i'll go ahead and get these tightened up these two jam nuts and then uh we can move on to finishing up the drive line and making it permanent so all right oh the other thing we need to do while we're looking down here we need to make a stop before we finish the drive line to keep that clutch arm from going all the way forward so don't know how we're going to do that yet but we'll get something figured out so all right all right y'all it's actually the next day um i'm still learning this new camera uh the battery life's not uh what it is on my other big camera but it's actually a bigger battery on another camera so um we're trying freehand right now again hopefully it uh not too shaky for y'all but we need to finish up this drive line we need to uh pull the cover off here again get that out um we need to get the support bracket put in and then uh Oh, we need to make the pins and put the driver pins in and uh, also look for a possible way to make a uh, clutch pedal stop to keep it from coming back too far. So, alright, um, I'm going to get the camera set up here. Uh, I'll probably pull that stuff off off camera. Uh, you guys see me make it, install it, and destall it, whatever, a bunch of times. So, you don't need to see that again. But, uh, we'll, uh, get on it. Alright, y'all. Uh, I got that cover off there. So, now we just need to make six of these drive pins. And all they are is half-inch bolts. Goes through the clutches. Threads into the, uh, driver. And that's what actually drives your clutches. And then, you know, your pressure plates are in between them. So, um... I got one run in there. I'm just going to basically mark it and we'll get her chopped off. And after we get it chopped off, we'll clean up around the edges of it. And then I'll put a slot in it so I can take a screwdriver and actually run that in good and tight. And after we get them all made and all installed, we'll take and we'll put uh, nuts back here on this backside with lock washers and uh, get those tightened down. And that's. Uh, that's it for the drive pin, so let me uh, get to making those, and uh, we'll bring you guys back after we get them all made. Alright, y'all. Uh, got this, uh, got all those drivers put in there. You can see the slot I put in the end of the studs there to run them in with. Um, we do have to take this back out because I forgot totally that I ordered a red spring for the clutch. Um, so we got to take the clutch back apart and put the uh, red spring in there, put it all back together. And we also have to put the support bearing on the shaft. Uh, there's not room to uh, just slide the coupler in and put the shaft, put the bearing on. So yeah, I, I get to run all those, all six of those bolts back out again, and uh, we will. Uh, uh, Get all the other stuff, you know, get the red spring put on, get the support bearing put on, and then we can, uh, I think, we can button the uh, drive line up for sure. The uh, only other thing we have to do is uh, on the rear axle back here, I was watching a car show last night, and uh, the uh, back spacing. We may have to put wheel spacers on this thing to run the uh, tires that we want to run. Um, so I need to get a measurement on that and measure the back spacing on the rims and stuff that I'm using. And if we need spacers, hopefully they're not too big of spacers, but if we need spacers, um, get those ordered and get those coming this way. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to work on the clutch over here. I'm going to work on the clutch stuffs here and, uh, get that spring changed out. And get the support bearing hung on it and uh, get everything back in together and um, of course like I said I'm gonna do that off camera you guys I showed you guys how to change the springs on these before um, 
So, yeah, we're going to do her. All right, y'all. We got all the pins installed. Um, I did not put the keeper nuts on the back, the lock nuts on the back side. Um, I thought I had them here. I don't, but uh, no big deal. I'll pick them up later on. Um, we got the new clutch spring put in. Uh, that's ready to go. Uh, the next thing we got to do is put the bracket in for the center support bearing. And uh, so uh, I'll get on that and uh, the drive line will be 99% done. So, all right. Let me get uh, let me get those brackets put in there, and we'll continue on with the next deal. All right, y'all. Um, got that center support bearing all mounted, all in. Got the lock collar all installed. If you guys don't know, um, this lock collar is fairly important. Uh, these springs have so much tension on them. When you push back on them, if you don't have a some kind of a lock collar or something there pushing against this bearing, you can actually push this pinion gear back through and push the bearing out of the back of the housing back here. Um, I've seen it happen. Um, it's not good. Um, so yeah, that's that's why that that's why we have a lock collar on there. So. Um, I think that does it for the drive line. Um, the only thing I do have to yet do yet is get the uh, nuts for the back of the drive pins. Um, oh, we got to put the roll pins in these uh, here instead of the cotter pins, and we got to put a roll pin down through uh, right on the other side of this frame to keep the clutch arm from coming out. And after we get that done, uh, we will have to make a stop and uh, fashion up some kind of a spring to you know keep the pedal pulled back so um, but that's all just little minor stuff um, I'll probably throw it into another video this one's probably getting be pretty decently long so uh, yeah I think that's gonna do it for this one I appreciate y'all hanging out all right y'all that's gonna do it for this video uh, we got the drive line and all finalized in. Uh, like I said, the only thing we got to do is put the nuts on the back of those drive pins to keep them tight. Uh, everything else is in. Uh, so I'm happy with where we're at. Um, we're moving right along. Uh, real happy to get back on this project. You know, I want I've been wanting to, you know, get back on. I want to get it done. Uh, just, you know, other things have taken priority over, you know, working on this. Uh, this is just a secondary puller so but uh, yeah so uh, probably the next video we're gonna put the dash tower in uh, we're gonna have to redraw a hole because we have moved that steering uh, shaft uh, to the right um, roughly I think about two or three inches so I got to draw a new hole in the dash we ain't no big deal you know it's a pulling tractor we're customizing so um, but yeah um, oh and we got a uh, I did kind of do a rough measurement uh, for the wheel spacers in the back. Uh, we're going to need like two or two and a half inch wheel spacers. Uh, sounds like a lot, but it's not. Um, you know, cars and trucks, you know, use wider ones and they're fine. Um, they're pulling, they're doing a lot more weight and a lot more torque than what we are. So, you know, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, I just got to measure the rims, finalize that. Um, I'll probably put that into the next video also showing how you do that, how you measure back for backspacing and stuff. Uh, kind of looked on the uh, Jungle website and uh, some other sites online. They run about 50 bucks. No big deal. Um, the only thing is, is they're half inch studs and half inch, you know, holes for the bolts. Uh, we run 7 16 studs. Uh, I don't want to draw my rims out. Uh, so we'll have to probably uh, have some spacers machined or we'll make some spacers to go in them to uh, take up that little bit of slop and then press the uh, studs that are in them out and replace them with half end or with 7 16 studs which I've done that before too um, no big deal it's easy to do so yeah um, 
yeah, that's about it. Uh, appreciate you all watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, you know, keep wrenching and, uh, you know, keep hammering down. So we'll uh, catch you all on the next one. Thanks.